What's up guys, today's video is going to be focusing on this little portable TV I bought. This set me back around 20 bucks, and it's a pretty cool little TV. I'll give you a little overview, it's got radio, it's got this big antenna, it used to be analog stations you are able to tune into, but you can't anymore. And the main reason I bought it is because it actually has AV inputs at the back here. So, I got it for 20 bucks. And the reason I got it for so cheap is because the CRT does something a little weird. Now, I'll turn it to radio and you'll hear it works. It sounds, it sounds about as good as a little speaker like this can. But I'll turn on the TV and you'll see something is a little bit wrong. So we'll give it a little second to warm up. Yeah, that's not great. So the TV is suffering from something called a partial vertical collapse. This could be caused by a cold solder joint. This could be caused by a bad transistor. But what I think it is, is bad capacitors. I already opened this up to see if there's anything blatantly wrong. And I did see a capacitor that didn't look too right. So, um, yeah, we're going to be opening this up and hopefully trying to fix this. So right now, as it sits, it's kind of just a crappy radio. Now, I've never worked inside of a CRT before, so this is hopefully going to be kind of fun. I hope I'm not going to get shocked. I know the basic safety precautions for working inside of a CRT, as well as this one's smaller, so instead of killing me, it'll just give me a really nasty shock, I think. So, um, yeah, I guess we'll get to taking this apart. Alright, so now that we've got this scary thing taken apart, um, I'll, let's, let's just see. Um, what's in here? So, this that's this is the flyback right here. It was just on, so I probably shouldn't be touching it. Um, <laughs> that was actually kind of stupid. There's your high voltage anode cap. I'm kind of scared to discharge it. I am gonna I'm gonna be making a uh, discharge stick out of the screwdriver. This capacitor right here is I think our problem. You can see it's starting to bulge a little, and I'm pretty sure. This circuit has something to do with the vertical. I've never discharged a tube before, and I'm kind of scared to. So, um, we're just going to let this sit for a day or so and hope that it's discharged. But it's pretty cool to see what's in here. I mean, you know, you got your cathode ray tube, you got your tuner circuitry, you got your CR2 driver board, which also functions as your amplifier. You can actually see the speaker in here. It's magnetically shielded. That's pretty cool. This thing's hella scary. I don't like looking at it. It it really scares me. Um, but I am unfortunately gonna have to take this apart. And I do have gloves. I they're not really electrically insulated, but they are gloves nonetheless. So um, yeah, I'm just gonna let this scary piece of crap sit, and we'll just start working on it. Okay, guys, I was putting this thing back together, and I just had a major discovery. Ignore the audio quality, I'm not using my uh, mic rig anymore, but um, basically, I'm, I'm going to try to zoom in as best as I can. It says V2, V1, H2, H1. The V2 and V1, which I assume stand for vertical, are on the bad capacitor's side. So, I'm like 97% sure it's this stupid capacitor that's causing all the problems. This is a major breakthrough and I'm super happy I saw that. Um, after I let this sit for a few days, I'm, I'm gonna obviously take the circuit board out and I'm gonna follow the traces to see if indeed my theory is correct. Alrighty everyone, our capacitors have arrived. Ignore my voice, I'm sick right now. But, here's, here's what I bought. <laughs> I bought three of these, um, jeez, Chong X. Yeah, that seems reliable. Couldn't even spell vent correctly. Sorry about my camera work, I'm not feeling great. See, 2200 microfarad, I got 25 volts because that's all they had. These, uh, these are probably crappier than the original capacitor that was in there, but I really don't care. I've, I've heard that these actually blow up before their rated voltage, which is kind of crappy, but look at, this is, this is above 10 volts, so I don't think this should blow up, maybe. Dude, I definitely overpaid, because these three crappy Chong X capacitors literally cost me like 12 bucks. So, um, yeah, let's get to repairing. Alright, 
right, let's see if this piece of crap works. Kind of scared. Okay, gonna make sure it's off. Okay. Um, I'm gonna go get a screwdriver to turn this thing on with. Okay, let's plug it in and see what happens. No explosions. Turn on the screen. And there we go. That is a fixed TV. All right, this is gonna be extremely stupid, but we're gonna be trying to play Wii on this thing. Ooh. Uh, here, that's because the V-hold isn't correct, so let me fix that real quick. It's a little warped. Um, let me see if I can fix the V-hold real quick. I wonder if there's any, like, magnetic crap around it. Okay, so we fixed the V-hold and geometry. This thing's looking about as good as one of these old sets can. It's a lot more blue on camera than it is in real life. So let's put in Mario Kart. <laughs> this thing is so shitty, dude. Oh, I saw it, I saw it. Oh. My Wii Remote's having a seizure. It doesn't help that the audio is like deep fried bass boosted. Unfortunately, my microphone rig didn't record any audio here, so I'm gonna have to do a voiceover. Now, this was probably one of the most fun Mario Kart experiences I've ever had. Something about playing on a tiny, crappy, black and white TV was just so much fun to me, I don't know why. Like, I couldn't actually differentiate between a red shell and a green shell, so I basically just threw a green shell off the map thinking it was gonna hit the person in front of me. Now, of course, me being the absolute goat at Mario Kart Wii, I of course won on 150cc Rainbow Road because I am that guy. So uh, yeah, if you found this video cool, thanks for watching, comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.